So uh, in patients who uh, have disease progression after venetoclax, if they have not seen a BTK inhibitor, that seems to be the class to go uh, with and um, it would be the preferred choice for patients who have disease progression on a BTK inhibitor uh, on the first or second generation. Right now we have venetoclax-based therapy in combination with an antibody as a, as a treatment of choice. Of course, uh, in patients who have seen both classes of drugs and have either intolerance to one or both classes or if they have progression in both, that would be a challenging uh, situation. And uh, we could still utilize PI3 kinase inhibitors in that setting, although uh, most of the time as a short-term bridge to something more prominent. So it's really important to think about the, the third line while we have these patients on their second line. So if you have somebody who's post-BTKI, or somebody who's post venetoclax and they're now responsive to venetoclax or BTKI respectively, it's time to start thinking about the next level, next line of therapy, namely cellular therapy, talking about uh, options like allogeneic transplant or CAR-T therapy if available. Uh, we are hoping that soon we will have access to newer classes of drugs, uh, namely the third generation BTK inhibitor pirtobrutinib, which could be a very important option in that setting, and maybe CAR T cell uh, therapy in near future as well. So our options will be more in near future, but right now we're kind of uh, in a situation that we have to be really thinking ahead of time because after these two classes, options are really not many.